In this video, I'm going to show you how to take your car and get it ready for milling out in, in a CNC machine, okay, in a CNC miller. We're not using a Denford machine for this. We're going to use a Tormac. That shouldn't really matter for you. So what I'll do is I'm going to uh, add something now, which uh, I like to call my guideline. And this square here, uh, the back square, is the exact size of the official F1 in schools Denford billet that you can buy. That is the foam block that you cut out. And the hole, the circle that I've drawn here, that is at the exact point where the CO2 canister goes in and um, it's in the correct place as well. We'll go into the dimensions for that later. Um, the next thing is the length of the stock material or the billet is there and uh, I've got that at 224 millimeters so from here to here is at 224 and I've also put in an 8 mil border here and that border right at the very front is where the official Denford jig grips on to the front end of the official Denford billet for F1 in schools. I've created this so that when I design my car I know that I'm not going to have any mistakes car being too long the hole is in the wrong place and I've also got the tether groove which is in this back square so this is my model so the first thing is you want everything to be one body you can see I've got multiple bodies we're not going to be um, cutting this with the CNC obviously these sort of things will be 3d printed so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and select manufacturer okay you can see that i've been doing quite a few but what i'm going to do is i'm going to walk you through a completely new setup and what we can see here is a piece of stock material let's say and this is like the material that is going to go into the cnc we need to tell the cnc machine the orientation of the model at the moment uh, fusion is telling the cnc that z is up and that's not true because we're going to be cutting the right side so if i I was to move this around we would be actually uh, this is up I say we would be cutting down into this so the first thing I need to do is change the orientation of the Z axis okay so let's have a look the operation type is milling we are definitely milling we're going to change the, um, the Z axis so I'm actually going to select the Z axis stroke plane and I know that this piece here is absolutely flat okay and if I was to select that plane that would be on the Z so as you can see here Z is now pointing away from the right side of the model that means that Z is up and Y is actually going across and X is going the length of the model what I've got now is I need to tell Fusion where zero, zero is. Tormac, zero, zero is in this top left-hand corner. So I'm gonna say box point and it is there. And just check that Z is still in the right orientation and Y is still in the orientation. Okay, we're not gonna be cutting two bodies, we're gonna be cutting one body. I'm going to select that and only that. This is only our guideline and we're gonna be using this for the stock material now as well. So it's actually double as useful to get a little guideline in there. Let's have a look at the stock material. So on setup, we're going to go to the stock. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a fixed size box that is identical to the official F1 in schools Denford block that you have bought from Denford. Okay. Um, let's have a look at the width. Now the width for me is 224. So let's just explain that a little bit more. So 224 is here, and I want this model to be on that side of the block. Okay, so uh, the reason is the block comes with its own hole ready for the gas canister. So I want these um, absolutely aligned. So I'm going to offset that. Okay, I'm going to do it 23.5. And what I've got now is the, uh, the right length of stock material. If we have a look at this part here, and I said earlier that this is the official jig from Denford for F1, this is where the clamp is, all along there. And if you're 
CNC goes into that, it is going to destroy the jig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Fusion that this material does not exist anywhere near that jig. So that Fusion does not tell the CNC machine to cut it by accident. So what I do is I'm going to right click that and edit my stock material and I'm going to turn this to 214 I'm going to offset that to 13.5 and now you'll see what I mean when I go to the front view now that stock material is ending before my clamp line not on my clamp line before because I'm scared that I'm going to damage my jig again. Okay, let's have a look at the back end of the car and the stock material ends exactly where the car ends. Okay, so now because the CNC is cutting away from the stock material, it is going to cut that car and um, the, the flat back of the car is going to be the flat back of the stock material. No need to recut that. We're, not, we're also not going to cut that back because part of the jig is a pin or a, a cylinder that goes straight through that coal. And I am stopping the stock material before it gets to that part of the jig. Otherwise, I'll damage that again. Okay, let's um, finish the stock material. So it's 214 and it's starting from that orientation. Um, now let's have a look at the depth. We've got the Y, that is 50. However, if you have a look, the bottom of the stock is not the bottom of the model, which means the tether lines of your stock will not be in line with the tether lines of your model. Now, so I've got to now offset this on the Y so we are going to offset that and we're just going to raise that up slightly so if i go to one that is exactly where i need it to be okay so now the bottom of the stock material is the bottom of my model so if we have a look that tether lines should be in line and you can see they are and again that is very very important okay the height um, so that is along the Z axis here of the official block is only 65 uh, millimeters. It is not 70. So that needs to be changed. And we can just OK that now. And just double check to see if anything is overlapping and nothing is. So I'm happy that my stock material is exactly the same as the stock material that I'll be using in the in the CNC. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to adaptive clear. So I'm going to click this here. You can see the tool orientation. So that would be the chuck, that would be the tool that is facing that. So you know that when that goes in and starts cutting, it is cutting the right side of that model. Uh, if you're a bit worried, you can always have a look there. So there's the tool coming down and it's going to cut that uh, that material and you can see that is the starting point and that's really really important knowing that because otherwise you're going to get error messages like um you're out of range and things okay you want to select your tool i you can see that i've already selected this i've selected my tool number one it's the only tool i use it is a six mil ball end let's just show you how that works so what i'm going to do is i'm going to edit that tool so you can see now I've, I've looked at the tool and I'll put a picture up and I've measured it um, by hand and I've transferred those measurements directly into Fusion. Now it's got two flutes, it is a ball end mill, it's a uh, carbide, um, it's only cutting foam so that doesn't really matter. Um, everything I'm doing is in millimetres. Um, all these diameters are accurate to the tool that I have. You may not have that tool. So you might have to do your own and I'm going to cancel that. OK, so I've selected my tool. I've disabled the tool, uh, the coolant because I don't want the machine to flood. I've left all these speeds as is. The next part is the geometry. Now, the geometry is incredibly important. And the reason is we're telling the tool where it can go and where it cannot go. 
some of the places we already know it can't go is it can't go here and we know that there is a aluminium pin from the official Denford jig and we don't want to cut that off so I don't want my tool to go any part anywhere past zero on the x-axis okay so what we've got to do is we've actually got to create a boundary for that tool so I'm actually going to create a bounding box if the tool goes on the outside of the bounding box it is going to cut through the jig if it goes on the inside of the boundary then it's not going to cut the model properly so it's going to go on the center of the boundary so that means it will not go past where I want it to but it will cut exactly where I want it to cut okay let's have a look at the heights now the heights is talking about where does the tool go on the Z axis okay so clearance just means how high it's going to go you can leave clearance as it is you can lower it down if you're in a big rush because it doesn't really make that much difference um, retract is where it's going to go up when it's stepping over again you can change that but for safety I leave that where it is and top is telling the tool exactly where the beginning of the material is and if you've created your guide like I have you won't have a problem with that the bottom we need to change we don't want the tool to go all the way through but we can't just go halfway either because the tool that I'm using is a bull nose if I only go halfway then the radius on the end will leave a radius edge when it cuts and that's going to give you a bit more grief when you're having to sand stuff down afterwards so what I do is I go lower by six mil okay so I'm gonna offset that by about six mil so there's uh, 31 and if we go to 25 that's definitely going further than I need to go but it's not going too far passes I don't need to do you can you can change this you can do loads and loads of passes it's gonna take you hours and hours and hours you're going to get it smoother, but you're still not going to get it as smooth and as quickly smooth as if you were just using uh, a bit of glass paper or emery cloth. If you're in the, the World Championships, you probably want to do several passes and several different tools just to get it as accurate as possible. Um, it'll give you a better chance. Okay, so that's everything there is done. Now I'm going to OK, and it's just going to calculate that toolpath. And the most important part now is to just wait and watch. I'm watching the blues. The blues is telling me where that tool is going to go when it's cutting. The red is showing me the plunges. The uh, yellow is showing me the, uh, the passing. Okay. And then the greens are showing me when it's going to come up. We'll just give it a bit more time. Let that go to 100%. Okay, and now what we've got is our toolpath. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that away, go back into manufacture. I'm going to go here, I'm going to highlight that last thing that I did, and let's just have a look. Okay, so it's going to start here, it's going to go down, it's going to go around, it's going up and down and all over. That's the, the right side done. The left side, there is my datum. Okay, um, it's not the same because you're turning, you'll see this in the next video, we're turning the, the stock material over. So that means that we're upside down. Okay, let's have a look at if I was to do the top. The top's pretty easy. Um, there's the, the datum again. You can see where the X and the Y is. And now I'm going to post process. I use the Tormac, so that would be the Tormac Path Pilot. You put, you give it a program number, and then I am going to save that. And I've got it so that it opens straight away, and this is what the machine code will look like. At some point, you'll become so good that you'll even be able to flick through these numbers at high speed, and in your head, you'll be able to simulate exactly what is going on. And when that happens, and you've really, you've really become a massive geek. Okay, um, I'm going to close that down now, and we're going to finish. The next video, we will take this file, we'll put it onto the, the CNC machine, so in my case, it will be the Tormac. 
and then I'll show you how to set that machine up and cut it. Thank you very much. And uh, subscribe, I think they say.